Welcome back to All Indie Car, the show that looks at the ins and outs of Indie Car racing. Mexico is a pretty underappreciated country in the world of racing. It's given us modern stars like Sergio Perez and Pato Award, and the F1 brothers of Pedro and Ricardo Rodriguez. But besides them and Daniel Suarez, most don't know the stories of the other gentlemen to race under the Mexican flag, but today we tell one of these stories. Specifically, we tell the story of Michelle Jordan Jr. Born September 3rd, 1996, Michelle Jordan Jordan Jr. was born into a family of racers. His father raced in kart in 1980 and 1981, where he'd only have two starts to his name at Autodroma Hermanos Rodriguez, where he DNF twice. There was also an incident involving a USAC race at Ontario Motor Speedway, which is a subject for a future video. Michelle Jordan Jr.'s uncle, Bernard Jordan, was also an IndyCar driver, with the best finish of sixth at Miami. Michelle Jr. would start his career in the Mexican Formula Junior Series at the age of 12. After this, he would run Formula Ks, then Formula 2s, all of which where information is unavailable and most likely lost to time. His earliest documented racing results are from the 1995 ST4 Mexico series. For the life of me, I can't find any information about this series after searching the internet. It could be Ducati ST4s, but this is unclear. The year is 1996, and at the age of 19, Jordan would run races in the Indy Racing League and the Kart Series. His IRL career went as follows. His two starts in the 1996 Indy Racing League season would come at Phoenix and Indianapolis. Racing for Team Scandia, Jordan would finish 20th at Phoenix and 13th at Indianapolis. The next season would only see one start at Las Vegas, where Jordan would finish second behind Richie Hearn. This would be his last IRL start for the time being, while he would move on to kart. Driving for Payne Coin Racing and Dick Simon Racing, his first four seasons would be pretty awful. I mean, what do you expect? The guy was a rookie in a bad car. His kart career from 1996 to 1999 would only see two top 10s with a best finish of 7th. Jordan would move over to Ben Hazard and racing for the 2000 season, but by this time, kart was beginning their downfall. The death of Greg Moore left a black eye on the sport that would stay for a long time. Goodyear would leave kart this season along with series president Andrew Craig being ousted from that position. The biggest blow would come from the failure of the US 500 their version of the Indy 500. This would allow kart teams to race in the Indy 500 for the first time since 1995, giving a decisive win to the IRL. This was a crushing blow to the series, but let's get back on track. Michel Jourdain would get five top tens in his two years at Banhazen, but by this time, the series was on its last breath. The cancelled race in Rio de Janeiro and the Texas fiasco would be bad, but what killed the series would be the events that happened in September. On September 11th, 2001, the world was changed changed forever. With the devastating loss of life, an anti-air travel sentiment was set into the minds of Americans, and when you have an American series that goes overseas, you can see this was going to be a problem. The money-hungry scumbags at kart, however, would still race the very next week, being the only racing series to do so. Being the only one can bring some eyes to your sport, but this would be a curse for kart. On lap 143 of the American Memorial Kart Race at the Lausitz Ring, Alex Sonardi would spin exiting the pits and get T-boned by Alex Tagliani. The race fans who tuned in would see one of the most gruesome moments in racing history. This was the final nail in the coffin for Kart. The IRL would be the head force from here on out, and by 2003, the series went bankrupt. The abrupt demise of Kart, however, wouldn't slow Jourdain down. In 2002, he signed for Team Ray Hall, where his career would improve immediately. 14 top 10s, 5 top 5s, and a 10th place points finish was an amazing turn of events. The next season would be even better though. 15 top 10s, 11 top 5s, 6 podiums, and 2 wins would see Jourdain finish 3rd in the final kart season. Once the series became champ car in 2004, however, Jourdain would lose his ride and become teammates with AJ Allmendinger at Rue Sports, where Jourdain could only get 6 top 5s. Sponsorship money would diminish after this, and Jourdain would move to NASCAR to race in the Trucks and Nationwide series. His main NASCAR highlight would probably be being involved in the infamous Shane Meal Dale Jarrett's schism at Bristol. Finally, to round off Michelle Jourdain's career, he would run the Indianapolis 500 in 2012 and 2013 for Ray Hall Lehrman Lanigan, where he'd failed to qualify in 2013. A disappointing ending to an 
overall solid career. I think it's safe to say that Michelle Jourdain Jr. is a solid IndyCar driver. He was better than his father and uncle before him, and if it wasn't for the collapse of Kart and his sponsorship money drying up, we could be talking about even more success. Unfortunately for Jourdain, he was caught up in a political landslide that he wasn't involved in. A series of unfortunate events restricted a career that could have blossomed even more, but despite that being the case, the career of Michelle Jourdain Jr. is still just as respectable.